In this video, I will teach you about the laser that we use for pulse laser deposition. To start with, laser is an acronym, meaning light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. To create a laser, you start with a positively charged nucleus and a negative electron. Electrons reside in orbitals. Most of the time you will find the electrons in their ground state, which is also called their lowest energy level. When a photon contacts an electron in its ground state, it can excite the electron to a higher energy level. This process is called stimulated absorption. The energy from the photon has now transferred to the electron. Now once the electron is in its excited state, it is unstable, so it will eventually need to de-excite. So you wonder how the electron de-excites? Well, Small amounts of vacuum energy cause the electron to fall back into its ground state. This produces a photon, with the energy equal to the difference in energy levels. This process is known as spontaneous emission. When a photon interacts with an excited electron, it forces the electron to fall to its ground state, thus producing a photon. The photon produced will be identical to the one that initiated it. This means the photon will have the same frequency and phase. These photons are coherent. This is the process of stimulated emission, which is what all lasers use. This is the acronym for laser, light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. If we have two electrons undergo spontaneous emission, it is unlikely that the photon will contact an electron in phase. For the excited electron to sustain stimulated emission and not spontaneous emission, enough time must be available. The lifetime of an electron in the excited state is extremely short. So lasing materials also contain what is called a metastable state. These are excited states with lower energies. These allow the electron to stay there for longer lifetimes. This allows enough time for a photon to cause stimulated emission. The PLD system uses a laser known as a KRF excimer laser. This means that it uses the krypton fluoride gas molecule to power the laser. This is an ultraviolet laser that operates at 248 nanometer long wavelengths. As humans, we can see between 400 and 800 nanometer long wavelengths. So we cannot see this laser. Krypton and fluorine atoms are introduced into the laser cavity. This is the ground state of the molecules. Electrons discharged from the negative electrode may collide with krypton or fluorine atoms. The electrons will excite the krypton atoms or break apart the two fluorine atoms. The molecules are now in their excited state. This now makes the krypton and fluorine want to combine and create a molecule. This would be the metastable state in our previous example for general lasers. The krypton fluoride molecule is unstable and can randomly produce a photon. When this photon contacts another krypton fluoride molecule, it de-excites the krypton fluoride molecule. And when that happens, it produces a photon. Since the molecule de-excitation was initiated by a photon, the photon produced travels in the same direction as the initiating photon. Inside the laser cavity, there is a mirror on each side, one being 100% reflectivity, in this case the mirror on the right, and the other a slightly lower percent reflectivity, the mirror on the left. We have the ability to control the energy and number of pulses the laser produces. The photons emitted go through a series of mirrors and then through a convex lens to sharpen the beam to a point. This then ablates the target material and creates plasma. Plasma can get up to 10,000 degrees Celsius. To put this into perspective, that is harder than the surface of the sun. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you learned something new.